Hey everybody, I hope you guys are healthy and safe. So this is the Nubia Red Magic 6R. This is the newest phone in Nubia's gaming series. And you might be able to already see that this phone is relatively small compared to previous Nubia devices and also other gaming phones out there. This phone weighs only 186 grams and measures 7.8 millimeter in thickness. Considering that this is a gaming phone, so there are some heavy duty specs in here. It's quite impressive that Nubia managed to craft a device this thin and light. So let's go over the numbers because to be honest, the only thing that sets a gaming phone apart from a typical non-gaming phone or is that the gaming phones have numbers that are tip top in almost every metric. And that is the case here. Almost every number here that I'm gonna throw at you, it's gonna be among the highest you can get in the industry except for screen resolution and battery size. So let's go over the screen. This is a 6.7 inch OLED panel with a refresh rate up to 144 hertz. It's a variable refresh rate, so you can also drop down to 30, 60, 90, or 120. So 144 hertz is completely buttery smooth, but that's not all. The touch sampling rate is also 360 hertz. So that means the latency between finger movement and the action on the screen, it's gonna be as low as the human eye can see. So this screen also supports 10-bit colors and gets up to 770 nits of brightness. So that's very bright for a mobile device. Unfortunately, you do only have a single bottom fine speaker. That's quite a letdown. But at least it does get pretty loud. So inside the phone is a Snapdragon 888 with 12 gigs of LP DDR5 RAM and 256 gigs of UFS 3.1 storage. And there's also Bluetooth 5.1 and Wi-Fi 6E. So I just threw a bunch of numbers at you and you'll probably know that these numbers are all basically tip top in their specific category. And like I said, there are only two number based spec of this phone that isn't like completely tops in the industry. So the first is the screen resolution. This is just an FHD plus panel. And the second is battery size, 4,200 milliamp hour cell. That's definitely on the small side, especially for a gaming phone at 144 Hertz. But to be honest, if you're a heavy gamer, there's almost no phone out there that can last you all day anyway, unless the phone is like a 12,000 milliamp hour battery. So even if they give you a 6,000 milliamp hour battery, you're still gonna have to charge the phone in the middle of the day anyway. So I guess it's okay, considering you're getting a compact package. And the silver lining is you do get a charger in the box and it is a 30 watt fast charger. So of course you have an in-display fingerprint reader underneath the screen. And you have shoulder triggers right here, one on the bottom and one on the top of the phone. So when you hold the phone like this, they're on the left and right. And just having shoulder triggers just improved the gaming experience so much, particularly in first person shooters. Look at the back of the phone. You have a quad, quad camera system, which I'll get to later, but this is a metal back that we need to talk about because this is one of a five part system for cooling. So inside the phone, you have graphite cooling, and then you have liquid cooling, and then you have thermal gel that's applied on top of that, and then there's a copper foil, and then finally, a metal frame to help keep everything cool. All right, now let's look at the quad camera system. So basically, you have a 64 megapixel main camera, Sony IMX682 sensor, and you have an eight megapixel ultra wide. Both of these cameras are solid. During the day, you're gonna get pretty respectable shots. At night, they're, they're okay. Definitely not the best camera phones around. And then the last two cameras are five megapixel and two megapixel sensors for depth and macro. Basically, they don't really do much. Just come into this phone thinking of it as a dual camera system. You have a main and a wide. Okay, let's look at the phone software. So this phone runs Android 11 with Red Magic's Android skin on top. Red, Nubia calls it Red Magic. OS and this is version 4.0. For the most part, the phone behaves like how you'd expect the Android phone to behave, except there is no app tray. And the app icons has a you know unique aesthetics that's more in line with how gaming phones usually look. I do like the look of this calculator app, for example, but once you tap into the app, it looks just like any other smartphone app. So it's just literally a skin on top, but the UI is pretty clean. Now, when you swipe down right here, you see where 
the software differs a little bit. This is a thing called Game Space, which if you're familiar with gaming phones, you will know what this is. It's basically a center to control all your mobile games. Not just that, it also offers superior controls. Now this menu is quite useful because first of all, you can see all your data immediately, like how much the phone CPU, GPU is running, how fast or slow your network speed is. You can adjust refresh rate on the fly, along with screen brightness, all that. You can also launch specific apps in a floating window. So for example, let's say I'm stuck on this level, I can just open up Chrome, load up YouTube, and look look for a walkthrough video to cheat basically. Well not cheat, like guide me as I play. Or someone sent I need to send a WhatsApp message and just open WhatsApp in a floating window and but of course the two biggest features in my opinion are the shoulder trigger buttons and aim assist. So shoulder trigger as the name implies allows you to assign an on-screen button and after that you can then you can then just hit the trigger to activate the buttons. So, you, so as you can see, I'm not that good at this game. I'm almost getting killed. So what you can do is turn on aim assist. What it does is it will place a crosshair on the screen like a larger one for you to aim easier. You can adjust the size, adjust the color. So maybe I like to see red better. I have a bigger, better crosshair if I need to aim. Now that game I played earlier, Modern Combat, actually doesn't support 144 hertz refresh rate, but this game, Real Racing 3 does. So you can definitely see the extra fluidity in this game because it is running at 144 hertz. So yeah, this is the Red Magic Nubia 6R. If you're someone who plays a lot of games but don't want a phone that's too bulky in your pocket, you might want to look into this one because this is one of the more compact and small gaming phones I've tested yet. And the good news for a lot of you watching this is this is the rare Chinese phone that's gonna be available even in North America. So if you're watching this in the US and Canada, you can buy this officially. It's not just on sale in Asia or Europe like some Xiaomi devices, for example. Now, I don't know the official price of this phone yet, but if I have to guess, I think a safe guess would be around the $700 or $750 range because I recently tested the ZTE Axon 30 Ultra and that phone has a lot of similarities with this phone and that phone was around the same price. I mean, Nubia probably don't want to admit this, but they are part of ZTE. So this is a ZTE phone. So we can expect this phone to be around 750 bucks. I think at this price range, Snapdragon 888, 144 hertz screen, UFS 3.1, LPDDR5 RAM, all the latest like connectivities and stuff. There's not much more you can ask for. Even if you don't play games, this is a pretty decent phone to use as a daily driver. Other than the fact the camera's a little bit weak, but if you don't take a lot of photos, it's not gonna be an issue. So anyway, that's about it for this video. I'm gonna have more content coming up in the next few days. So if you're interested in keeping up to date with all the latest gadgets, please consider subscribing to my channel or follow me on Instagram at Ben's Gadget Reviews. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.